Welcome back to the show as we continue our discussion on what role Arab states can play in fighting ISIL. We're joined from Amman by a former Jordanian Air Force General, Mamoun Abu Nawar, and here with me in Washington is Tofik Hamid. He is a former militant extremist from Egypt and is now a reformer. Also with us is Phyllis Benes. She is a longtime writer and analyst on Middle East issues. Thanks again to all of you. Let's go back to Jordan to Mamoun Abu Nawar. And uh, Mamoun, we've heard voices here advocating against an exclusively military solution uh, against ISIL. What are the options that are open to a country like Jordan right now in taking on this militant group? Jordan is very much concerned just to keep also the fight away from its border because it's, when it's, if it's come close and that missed to our, to our border, we are in danger. Saudi Arabia are in danger, Egypt in danger, China is in danger. You know, I just want to like to comment also about uh, bombing the cities like Mosul and other big cities. I don't think the coalition will do that. They will do whatever they can just to avoid correlatal damage, like what they happened now in the campaign. We didn't hear that they will kill so many people, something like that. So I think targetees here play a very great role, especially if they're American come and, you know, these forward air controller to guide this airplane to the proper target. So I don't think the air campaign will go well, but that is a, a civil, uh, I mean, intercity war. So. That will take a long time for Mosul and other part of the cities. Uh, there is, I think, the only thing now, these people, they don't understand except force. And uh, they're willing to die and how you can defend yourself against them. So the only way is to wipe them out. But having said that, I think Turkey get to be put some under pressure or influence to come in and open Angelic Air Base and to step in doing even if a safe haven or whatever and create sort of a no-go zone for ISIL. That also the play a great part. And that will be also a game changer for the whole thing, the balance, as I said, political reform in Iraq and take a step in. That will sort of surround them, isolate them, and doing their campaign also, that will have then an effect and probably they will hide away and go around mountains, etc. But you need also to carry on uh, another, uh, you know, challenge you you might face in our region is okay. the ideological one, which we need to face it very well. Uh, in Jordan, these things with the what's happened to our pilot, you know, it fired back, and these people with ISIL uh, sort of. Uh, sympathy or whatever, uh, they are diminishing away and, and, you know, they're finished. So Jordan is very much united uh, with the mission. Uh, we are not war uh, monikers, sort of, but uh, right. that's the only way we can defend the country and the region as a whole. Okay, Phyllis, let me quote, though, cite the words there of our guest in Jordan, Mamoun Abu Nawar, who said, these people do not understand anything but force. You know, I don't think anyone is talking about we should call on al-Baghdadi to sit down at the table and negotiate. That's not realistic. What is realistic is to recognize that ISIS does not fight alone. There has been a lot of discussion. How is it that this relatively small group, we don't know exactly how big it is, some thousands of, of fighters, but not 350,000 like the Iraqi army or something like that, uh, how has this relatively small group been able to accomplish so much? How has it been able to take over this huge territory? The answer is, it does not fight alone, and it's not hated by everyone. The issue is not only, it certainly includes what we just heard, that it includes the ideological stuff. There are young people who are desperate enough to engage with that ideology and, and embrace it. But more than that, there are people who feel like their own government, and this is particularly true in, in Iraq right now, we're seeing this, where the government has been so sectarian the U.S. created, U.S. backed, U.S. armed, U.S. paid government has been such a Shia sectarian government that Sunni communities have felt not just that they're not getting jobs or they're, getting, they're, they're facing discrimination, but they're being arrested en masse, they're being tortured in prison, they're being executed in summary ways out on the streets. It, it's been a horrific situation, bad enough that very secular Sunnis are saying, you know, I hate what these ISIS people stand for, but they are still better. They will fight for Sunni interests 
against this terrible government that is doing all these bad things to me. Until that changes, the chances of winning people away from ISIS, I'm afraid, is simply not a realistic option. The notion that we're going to use bombing, you know, the idea that the U.S. has done it so well in Iraq or Afghanistan, where the, the numbers of civilian casualties has been absolutely disastrous, both on the human level and in terms of the political consequences of turning well, as, huge as, populations right. against the U.S. As you point out, you were critical of the U.S. involvement in Iraq and absolutely. Afghanistan. Should the U.S. have a role here at all, or is it aggravating the situation? It has a role. Yeah. It's playing the wrong role. The role is not a military role. That's making everything worse. The U.S. should be demanding and organizing, putting all of this energy that is now going into the military, the strategy, which military units, how much, whatever, all of that should go to the diplomatic side. How do we get, whether we call it Geneva III or whatever, how do we get new global and regional diplomacy functioning to start by ending the war in Syria. How do we get far more money? The U.S. owes an enormous debt to the people of that region for what it's done over these last decades. And one aspect of that means money. That the U.S. is paying a lot of money for refugees, but not nearly enough, not nearly as much as we owe. So the U.S. needs to pay more money, invest much more time and energy and high-level attention from President Obama and his top aides and Congress onto the diplomatic side. Stop talking about the military options, start talking about what actually has a chance to, to win away support yeah. from ISIS. Tiffik, let me ask you this. What about a role for religious leaders in the region? I mean, some clerics have been saying that Islam prohibits the killing of innocents. Can uh, religious leaders play a role and have an impact against ISIS? They can ISIL? play a role in preventing more people joining ISIS by convincing them that what ISIS is doing is not correct. However, however, to deal with people who have become radicals already, you need other approaches. As I mentioned, you need very strong deterrent in their mind. In world history, wars never ended until, as I mentioned, one of the opponents uses effective deterrent. This was a deterrent for the Nazi in Germany, for the Emperor of Japan, for both Americans and Russians during Cold War. But these people do not fear death. That is why there, there, have, there is a need to use other approaches, psychological approaches. There are deterrents, I can reassure you. But they are far beyond traditional Western mind way of thinking. That is the problem. You deal with a completely different psyche and mentality. And if religious scholars can play a role in decreasing the numbers who've joined, but those who are already radicals or jihadists or terrorists, mm -hmm. you need much better approach. You need non-traditional warfare that uses specific operations style, plus PSYOP operations coupled with this, but it has to be effective PSYOP operation, not just PSYOP operation. Using just psychological right. operations, not effectively, can aggravate it and ma can make things worse. Okay, let me get the view of Mamoun Abu Nawar in Jordan. Uh, Mamoun, can you fight a war against an ideology. No, you, you, it's very difficult. But on this, uh, the situation what we having now, and I, I think give a war a chance. Sometimes war leads to a political uh, solution, especially in Syria. Look, I said what he's doing with his people, bombing and killing people indiscriminate, and there is no red card <laughs> putting against his face. So sometimes we need to change the, uh, the balance of power on the ground to get to a political solution. But you can't do this with ISIL. ISIL is a people are monsters. They will kill everybody. They don't represent Islam or anything else. This is not a political thing. We have to buy them off the ground completely. To fight ideology, yes. You, you need to have, uh, you know, a big campaign, media campaign, social media campaign, all kind of thing to fight this and to convince people with dialogue, okay. etc. to get... All right, Phyllis, we've just heard that 1960s national anthem, Give Peace a Chance, being turned on its head there. Give war a chance. The U.S. has been at war in this region for a very long time, and it has failed. It has failed in what the U.S. said it was trying to do. It has failed at everything except killing people and creating more radicals. So I think we're done with giving war a chance. War had its chance. It lost. Those of us who were against it then were right, as it turns out. And trying to go back to war is not going to make it any different. 
President Obama's global war on terror is not the same exactly as President Bush's global war on terror, but it's also going to fail. You cannot bomb extremism. You can bomb some extremists, and you will always kill others, but you cannot bomb extremism out of existence. You can only bomb people and kill them. That doesn't end extremism. It never has, and it never will. Perfect. You've got the last word. I see that the, the traditional warfare failed over the last 10 years. And the failure does not mean we don't need uh, military operations. It's like a surgeon, if he failed in doing append appendectomy operation to remove the appendix. This does not mean that surgery is not ne needed in, re in treating appendicitis. You need to do it next time correctly. That is what is needed. Okay, that's where we have to leave it. That's it for this edition of The Heat. We'd love to hear from you, so please send us your questions, comments, and story ideas to theheat at cctv-america.com. And we'd like to continue the conversation on social media. Give us your thoughts and comments on our Facebook page. That's CCTV America. I'm Arnold Nido in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being here.